What's up, boy? Yo, what's up, my man? How you doing? I'm good. I'm good. You all right? Man, I'm blessed, man. I yeah, ain't know if in the gym or where you work. Yeah, I just got home. Yeah. So, um, yeah. so man, I appreciate you for being on the You Know Desi show. Uh, uh, we've definitely known each other for quite a while, and uh, I admire the work that you do. Uh, you, you do quite a bit. So uh, I wanted to use my platform to spotlight different people across the nation that are doing great work and are people to know. So that way, if um, if uh, my people don't know who you are and your people don't know who I am, we can just kind of cross pollinate everything. So um, right, right, right. Yeah. So for those who don't know, uh, please tell them who you are and kind of what you do. Yeah. So uh, Tyler Ralph uh, from New York moved out to Dallas, Texas, probably nine and a half years ago. Um, started a training company called Tyler Ralph Basketball. Um, you know, which we train players all over Dallas, Texas, all over the country. Um, and then I have a company in China um, and, and overseas called Driven Training. And that's what we do over there. Okay, cool. So, um, so, and, and I'm going to ask you a lot of stuff that I, I, I know some of it, but, <laughs> but I still got to right. ask. So, um, so what made you come to Texas and start doing the training? How did, how did you end up here in uh, Dallas? Well, there was a, a position at the field house uh, in Frisco for a skills yeah. trainer. Um, you know, and I, I was getting into it. I really didn't know what I was doing. Mm -hmm. um, and I had to, I knew I had to get out of, you know, where I, where I was living, yeah. uh, where I'm from. Um, you know, in Dallas, I kind of researched it, saw what it was, yeah. uh, realized the opportunity out here mm -hmm. and, and came down and started there and only worked there probably for – you know, two to three months before I realized it wasn't what they originally told me. <laughs> yeah. That's why I, 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 you know. I knew that part that you started out at Field House. I'm like, you were at Field House in Frisco? Like, yeah. Yup. Played. Yep, for probably two, <laughs> two, three months, man. Yeah. Yeah. And then I kind of grinded my way up, man. I just kind of took every t opportunity I could get to train kids in the area and, mm -hmm. um, you know, uh, ended up meeting Julius Randall, and and then from there, kind of, you know, kind of went to where you know it is today. Yeah, and um, and what year did you did you you said uh, about nine years? So you've been doing your thing about nine years. Yeah, it would be actually. I'll be here. I would have been in Dallas for ten years, coming up in August. Okay, cool. So so take me back to New York. I know you're from New York. I know you play college ball. I know you have like a crazy free throw percentage or something like that too. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, so I mean, I played high school ball in uh, New York, grew up in New York. Um, what part? You know, we won the state champ. Rochester, New York, upstate. Okay. Yeah, so um, went to like a, like Dallas Jesuits, like call McQuay Jesuit. Um, you know, won the state championship. You know, got I was named Mr. Basketball of the state of New York my senior year. Okay. Then went to uh, West Virginia for mm -hmm. a year, played for John Beeline. Uh -huh. um, yeah, and then um, transferred to St. Bonaventure, man. And, uh, you know, basketball program Atlantic 10 and, and ended up having a pretty good senior year and then uh, tore my knee when I was going to go over to Europe. Yeah. And that was that. Was that. that was my playing career, man. Gotcha. So, um so, yeah, so it seems like you were pretty early. Now, I know there's always been trainers around, but especially in the Dallas area, mm -hmm. it seems like you were pretty early on that trend and, and kind of built it up. And, you know, years later, you see it more often now. But, like, from the pretty much the beginning, I don't know how long we've known each other, but it was always like you were the go-to guy from, you know, pretty early on, you and you and Tim. So Yeah, I mean – when when I came out here, I think the only one that was really training out here was Walsh Jordan. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and like Tim was doing a couple things, but nothing like you know to the point of of having almost a company or whatever. Yeah. Um, yeah, and then I mean, it kind of you know kind of blew up in the area, and, and uh, <laughs> you know, a lot of guys you know that are training now you know have been in the gym you know with me, and you know, yeah. um, you know I. I don't even. I couldn't even tell you how many "quote unquote" trainers there are in Dallas, Texas, right now. <laughs> to be honest, <laughs> exactly. You know, at the end of the yeah. day, always go rise to the top. You know, and um, and and just seeing like the the progression of it. And so, 
Um, I know you said you kind of built it from ground up. So uh, with the with the basketball scene in Dallas, uh, I feel like, of course, Texas is always known for football, and there's always been some a few basketball players coming out of Dallas. But now you see it so much more. So um, how do you mm-hmm. – kind of seen that change over the last nine, 10 years that you've been in? Uh, I think that, you know, I think, you know, obviously, I think some players that, that maybe have would have played football in the past, mm-hmm. you know, are, are moving to basketball. Yeah. Um, I think there's more opportunities to play basketball in Dallas. Um, you know, and then and then I think these kids have a lot of resources in Dallas. You know, like kids in New York don't have the resources that these kids have um, in Dallas. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, when you see kids taking advantage of them and, and, you know, and the talent has always been here. Yeah. You know, I, I, you know, I can always remember seeing kids and be like, man, he's super talented. He just doesn't know what he's doing. Yeah. Um, you know, and, and the coaches have done a great job, I think, in this area. Um, trainers. And, um, you know, I, I think the area is kind of just taking basketball more seriously. And, and now you're looking at Dallas is, is probably one of the hotbeds of, of high school basketball in yeah. the country, um, you know, which which is really cool. Yeah. So so talk about the kind of the stigma that um, that American players get, because, you know, now it seems like so many uh, foreign players are like getting drafted and things like that. And it, it's almost like. They think that American kids are more selfish or don't know the fundamentals and different things like that. So how do you kind of see that? And, and being a trainer, um, I know obviously you, you're training for skills and things like that, but how do you kind of use that to, um, you know, make players better? Well, well, I think the European game is ahead of us as far as, as creating, you know, academies where skills are really um, trained. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I think a lot of times, you know, in, in, in the U S you, you've seen, you know, which isn't wrong, um, but just coaches roll the ball out and let kids play. Yeah. And, and that's, that's great. Like I have no problem with that stuff. Um, sometimes you just got to let them go out and play, but a lot of times, you know, there's little small details that, that can be taught, um, you know, and little things that, that I feel like have been missing out. Um, especially in the U.S. and, and even in Dallas, yeah, uh, you know that that you just there's the little details that can help these kids and help these players and and get better. But I think Europe does a great job of creating a brand or creating platforms where these kids can go and learn. Mm-hmm. And then you know another part of it is you go to Europe, you it's the players, man. You don't have so many people around these kids trying to tell them this and that. The parents are kind of you know, they take a back seat, and if you know, if you look in a in the U.S. now, I mean, I, I don't know if there's a whole lot of parents that have taken back seats. Yeah. You know, they always want to be involved, and I think, you know, that's a major thing for for these kids. I mean, it's I always say be a parent. Yeah, first. You know. Yeah. Yeah, be a parent and let your kids do their thing, and don't try to control the narrative. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, but I think the U.S. struggles with that mightily. Oh, yeah. Mightily. <laughs> it's always funny because, like, um, you know, my son, he'll be a senior next year. And um, uh, he plays football. But at one point, he was playing basketball. So I, I so I brought him to, to see you guys train. And it was kind of like, I felt like at that moment, it was like, you know what? Football is Because, <laughs> <laughs> you know. He yeah, does. yeah. And, and that's a. Yeah, it can be intimidating. You know, I, I think the thing that I try to do is, like, I'm going to throw you in the fire yeah. and see what you're about. You yeah. know, I don't I don't really do a whole lot of baby stuff. Yeah, and it, but it, um, was, it, it worked out great for me because I, I was always like, okay, if you're going to take it serious, these are, the, you know, this is the guy who you need to go and be serious with. But it ended up working out. He actually, um, he had 32 offers um, this, you know, yeah. as and he just committed a couple of weeks ago to Stanford. So, yeah. Dang. So. Oh, when it worked out perfect. <laughs> it worked out perfect. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Yeah. That's what's up. Yeah. That's what's up. That's what's up. He's super happy about that. But, uh, but yeah. For you, sure. For sure. 
take a back seat as a parent and let them do their thing, you know, um, and, and not yeah. get caught up in the hype. Because I think uh, a lot of players and families get caught up so much in the hype that it's kind of detrimental to, you know, to where they're going. Yeah, no question. And, and then I think, you know, it's the honesty, you know, that that these kids will benefit from. And yeah. a lot of times they're not getting it. Yeah. Um, you know, and that's what that's what we're here for is to be honest with these kids about where they are, what they need to work on and, and, and how to get to where they want to go. You know, and sometimes we crown these kids in 10th grade, yeah. you know, and then, you know, the parents are going to, you know, coddle them and, then once they get to it where, it, you know, it becomes push and shove and they got to really make decisions on their own, they don't know how. Yeah. Um, you know, and that's a major, major issue, I think, you know, with, with what's going on right now um, in the U.S. Yeah. One thing, uh, the other thing that I love now is with kind of like the positionless basketball, like, you know, mm -hmm. they're getting skill sets. You know, I'm, I'm 39, so... I'm like six one, but I'm from a country town, so I was the tallest thing out there. So, you know, uh, yeah. when I played foot, when I uh, when I played basketball, it was like you the tallest person, throw you in the post, and you know, <laughs> right, right. You develop no skills outside of that unless you're just kind of developing on your own. And then, like, exactly, if you even had a chance to go to college, like you're not gonna have a, the proper skill set, and you're like a small guard. You're not even a big guard, right? Point. <laughs> so, right. Yeah. Then you do these kids a disservice, and it's you know, <laughs> yeah. It's it's the game's changed a million, and and uh, you know the kids have changed. The 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 way things happen have kind of changed. You kind of gotta um, adapt with the times. Yeah. And uh, and realize you know what the game has become. Um, you know, but you know at the end of the day, it's basketball. I think it's a great thing. Um, way to bring people together and in, in, in the community together and, and especially in these times you know I think it's just you know basketball has always just been such a such a blessing to a lot of people yeah and um, and with your training style um, what do you kind of focus on I know a lot of people watch your your dribbling videos but I see you mm -hmm. doing screen you know how to come off screens in certain ways and um, and how to you know use the defender and different things like that and uh, so kind of what's your style what's your specialty what do most people kind of come to you for and then kind of from there yeah i mean i think they come for the dribbling because i think that's what they see on social media um but i think if they would pay attention and come to a session they realize how detailed you know everything is from yeah. ball handling how to make certain you know techniques work why kids can't do certain moves yeah. um we teach a ton of footwork whether within the handle um you know off the ball on the ball you know we teach movements we teach three on oh spacing um iq stuff mm -hmm. you know we teach shooting breakdowns you know a lot of it depends on on who the client is yeah. who's in the gym because mm -hmm. my my goal has always been to get the players the most reps. So if there's 15 kids, I can't, I don't want to go to a basket and break down a shooting technique because everybody shoots different. Yeah. Um, you know, but like, you know, with a Julius Randle or, you know, certain NBA clients I have, I can really specifically detail what we want to work on in that specific workout. Yeah. So I think it, it varies a lot with, you know, what type of class it is, what type of player it is, who the player is. Um, is it an individual session? Is it a group? You know, all that type of stuff. Well, yeah. So, um, so currently, how are your sessions set up? I know you have group as well as individual. So um, as we're coming through the, the pandemic, have, has that kind of affected your numbers and things like that? Or is it kind of uh, – I've still been seeing, you know, quite a few videos and things like that. So, Yeah, I think, you know, during the pandemic, it was like you got to totally change almost what my business was, which was – you know, on court, all that stuff. And I kind of switched it to Zoom. Mm -hmm. um, and then I did like IG live stuff, which which was great, went well. Yeah. And then, um, you know, we've been able to get in Preston Wood, you know, a little bit uh, with like Julius. And then uh, we've been going to Sanders Fit and doing some footwork classes. And then, you know, as things open up more, it'll go back to normal. But, you know, we'll start being like starting next week. It'll probably be 9.30 a.m. Mm -hmm. to about 1 p.m., 
with, uh, you know, whether it's NBA guys or, or pre-draft, whatever. Yeah. Um, and then I'll go down to Mel's for a couple hours, sprinkle some um, Zoom sessions in with this New York City group. Yeah. Um, you know, and, then, and then kids will start coming over. We have a whole French group that comes over. So mm -hmm. they'll come over, I think. I think they're coming over July 15th now. So they got yeah. pushed back like two months. Yeah. And, and talk about the international work that you do, because um, you just mentioned in French, uh, France. And so uh, I know you do a lot in China. You mentioned you have a, a, a China business as well. So kind of talk about how you got into that. And, uh, and I know you go over there quite a bit, from my understanding. Yeah, yeah. So we do a, we're doing the French pros for, I think this will be our fourth year. Mm -hmm. uh, most of that is in the summers, so that's about you know two months long that lasts. And then the China thing, I met a guy out here, uh, you know that was Chinese, lives in in uh, Frisco, mm -hmm. and he had all these connections to these Chinese youth. Yeah, and they would you run these basketball camps, but they couldn't really find the person that they wanted. Yeah, um, as far as what they wanted to do with their programs. Yeah. Um, and so, you know, I went over there, ran like uh, the 14 under national camp. And then, you know, from there on, I, I've been spending a lot of time, uh, set a business up out there. And uh, yeah, I mean, that's probably the biggest thing that's been hit by the, the pandemic, to be honest, is, is the Chinese part. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. But, yeah. you know, it's, it's, uh, we'll hey, see how it goes and we just got to keep working. Yeah. And like, even. You know measures like you going over there and coming back and and right i think you got a son or something too so you can't really just be exposed and then bring it back you know yeah 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 that's you know obviously you know being a dad goes is always number one but yeah yeah i, I don't even i haven't even looked at what the rules are as far as that is right now <laughs> yeah. i'm not going over there for a while though for sure. <laughs> right like you know just just post up out here <laughs> yeah i'm gonna keep it i'm gonna keep it dallas texas for a little while uh, yeah. So, so how much do you do, um, um, like, on a national scale? Because I know you're you're so busy out here. How much do you really get to travel? Whether it's New York or L.A. or doing uh, things in other places. Uh, sometimes you know during the season, like I'll go to New York a lot now. Mm -hmm. One because I love New York. But yeah. Two, you know, Julius plays for the Knicks. Uh -huh. uh, you know, so I probably was out there. I would say nine, ten times maybe. Um, yeah. Spent some time out there in the summer with them, mm -hmm. uh, you know. And then, you know, a lay here and there. Uh, we did like a, a thing with uh, NBA Two K out yeah. in um, like the Napa area, mm -hmm. and, and then you know we go certain places. We'll go to like uh, Lubbock. Um, yeah. I go and run a free camp in my in the city I grew up in, which is Rochester. Okay. In uh, yeah, do stuff like that, man. Um, yeah. But just I've been trying to spend more time here. Okay. Uh, just because, you know, I, I got to be here, you know, with being a dad and all that stuff. And I try to limit traveling. Yeah. So question. Um, I, you mentioned 2K. So are you in the esports at all? Or are you interested in esports? Do I don't play any video games. Yeah. But I'm asking for but, of just where the technology is going because i actually have a big meeting tomorrow about uh uh you know how they have the nba 2k league so i have a big yeah meeting tomorrow because they're they're starting like a g league type of thing of that but yeah and so yeah yeah so the most i've done with it is is i'm almost like all the moves in the game they'll have me come and do moves and uh -huh. then you know that's a lot of the moves you see in it oh that's so yeah, yeah, they'll be like, you know, Luca does this move, I got to do this move. Yeah. Um, you know, so it's a lot of that stuff. So that's that's kind of my involvement as far as that goes. Suit on and everything? The suit, man, it's terrible. It's yeah. horrible. <laughs> what is it, yeah. like, suit, yeah. little things on there? Yeah, it's miserable. It's like, it's like wearing like a, it's, it's like a one piece. It's, it's yeah. crazy. That's dope. <laughs> okay. Like, yeah, yeah. Like, I obviously play a lot of video games because uh, hooping wasn't my thing. I used to play football and, and all of that. But, but yeah, I, I play a lot of 2K with my, uh, you know, and, and things like that. But, yeah, that's really cool. So, yeah. Yeah, but, no, it's been fun, man. I've enjoyed it. But, yeah, I've I enjoyed it. connect you with some esports people. But And the only reason I say that okay. is because 
Um, you know, most guys that play basketball physically play basketball. They also play 2K as well. So at some point, exactly. there, there's some crossover. And then even from NBA players owning teams and then from, like, um, you know, when you, when you go all the way up uh, with, like, uh, the Dallas Mavericks have a team, the Rockets have a team, uh, I think the mm -hmm. Warriors have a team. So it's just growing and growing. And now they've even built arenas set up for eSports, which is crazy to me. <laughs> crazy. Yeah. Crazy. But, Nuts. Uh, Nuts. And uh, I don't want to take up too much of your time. So uh, I, wanna, I got like two more things for you. So Yeah. Yeah, cool. Yeah. So what's next for you? Where do you kind of see your career expanding? And what, what more do you want you know, to, to do with it? Uh, I think the next thing is, is trying to open up uh, my own facility in Dallas and then uh, expand it. Yeah. Um, you know, and, and then, you know, further on, maybe get into, you know, the coaching side, um, you know, depending upon, you know, how things go for the next, uh, you know, five to ten years. But, you know, I think opening a gym would be next. Yeah. Um, you know, and then, then – and then maybe, you know, trying to coach at some point when I'm older. Yeah. What uh, area are you thinking about? You know, I think we're thinking about a c couple areas. You know, obviously, Frisco has one, um, has a gym that we maybe, in, you know, try to figure out something to do with them. And then Addison yeah. and, and other uh, other areas like that, man. So, you know, I don't think, you know, the biggest thing is not to limit yourself. Yeah. Um, you know, but to take it, you know, take it in small steps also yeah so um so if people want to work out with you or whether that's in person or online um how do they reach you what's the website uh please talk about that as well yeah so we do we have a one of the biggest things that me and one of my business partner does is called hoopdynamic.com mm -hmm. so it's just a platform where where you can come and train with us online but also you know reach out to us if you want to train in person yeah. um you know a lot of workouts in there that especially during this time that players can do um you know so that's just www.hoopdynamic.com um you know and it's, it's a cool platform for kids especially right now to do workouts at home and all that stuff and then they can reach out to me within there and then you know obviously instagram's a great tool too where you know kids can dm or whatever they you know whatever they want to do instagram it's always funny because people will send me videos and like you know and and i'm not like the, i don't necessarily want to be like yeah that's my guy i know him like but yeah. send videos and i'm like oh that's Tyler. that's my guy <laughs> yeah 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 for sure so yeah instagram is is such a good tool for me and mm -hmm. um you know i try to i try to you know Obviously, you know, social media is social media, and, yeah. and I try to keep up with that, too. So who's shooting the videos and doing the edits? Because do you do some of that as well? Because you always have... No, I, I, I don't do any of that. My boy Michael Timmons does it. I film hoopers. I, I stay away from all that stuff. <laughs> um, you know, I stay away from the filming, and he stays away from the basketball court. <laughs> gotcha. And, and then you know? I, the DMs got to be crazy. Like, so are you still, you know... have if you blew up to where you're not managing your own IG or is it all you still? <laughs> no, I do my own. I love doing IG. Like I, 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 I control all that. Um, yeah. Cause I enjoy it. You yeah. know, I enjoy doing that stuff. I enjoy um, talking to people on IG. Um, I think it, it, if it's not you doing it, it's very inauthentic. Yeah. Um, and I try to be as authentic as possible, you know, with what I do. So, um, you know, I try to, I try to just, I think that, you know, your, your IG is your IG and, and you try to be a, as authentic as possible on your own platform. But yeah. And then, um, and then YouTube as well. I've been seeing you kind of pushing YouTube a little bit more as well. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Same, same thing. I mean, you know, that's, that's the same, you know, who dynamic he, he, he runs that too. He runs that. Okay. I kind of, I, I took, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm, he tells me what to do. He throws me the ball, tells me to dribble, and then we kind of just go from there. Okay. Um, you know, but uh, now nah, we do we do a lot of stuff. YouTube's blown up for us. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I really never paid attention to it until probably yeah. like ten months ago. Yeah, and uh, monetize that as well, which is crazy. Yeah, and it's just yeah, and it's another platform, and and try to use as many 
you know, online platforms as possible, you know, as you know, with business and, and, yeah. um, and stuff like that. Yeah. And then who are some of your current partners, um, you know, on the training side and, and different things like that? As far as people or, or companies or what? Yeah, companies like brands that you're working with. Cause I can see, like, I know me and you uh, have about that a little bit in the past, but I, I've yeah. always, like there's a there's a great opportunity that you have, whether it's a lifestyle brand or just, you know, mm -hmm. you have a great opportunity to get some ad dollars coming in from that way, you know. Yeah, we've done stuff um we've done stuff with Adidas. Um, you know, I'm 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 a Adidas partner now. Mm -hmm. Um I was with Leaning. Yeah. About I definitely knew that. You know Yeah. And then uh after that um, I'm now with Adidas, so we do stuff, you know, we'll do stuff together on the training side. They send me gear. We'll do, you know, camps, stuff like that. Um, you know, certain influencer performances, whatever we need to do. I've done stuff with Art of Sport, um, which is like a body wash company. Yeah. And then, um, you know, a bunch of other places too. I can't think of them right off my head, but. Have you did anything? You know, um shower peel or dude wipes or anything i haven't done anything with that yet no okay. no that i think that would be a great one though because that's you're sweating in the gym and yes and you need that okay <laughs> yeah let's talk offline about that i want to try cool. to set that up uh of course i know you Perfect. probably power hands people you know them right yeah yeah i did power hands for a little bit um yeah. you know so yeah those i love you know Darnell and Danielle are, are great people, though. Yeah. Talk about, you know, really good humans. Okay, cool. And so, yeah. yeah. Question. Who, who's coming up next? You see all of these guys in the, in the gym. So who's, the, who's kind of that next guy that you've been training? And he might be a high school guy. He might be a college guy. He might be a junior high guy. So who do you kind of see uh, that's kind of making strides right now? Oh, who have I been in? I mean, I think the kid, there's, there's a kid from New York that we got in the gym with when he came out here, this kid named Jonathan Kamunga. Mm -hmm. um, he just reclassed. His brother actually goes to Texas Tech. Okay. Um, you know, so I think he's a special, special talent. Yeah. Um, I think the most slept on kid in this area is Jamias Ramsey. Mm -hmm. um, I think that as far as the physical attributes that he has translates. And where is he at? So he was at Texas Tech and now he's in the, he'll be in this draft. Okay. Um, you know, and then, and then young players around this area, um, you know, I really got to get out and see more of the high school kids. I'm so caught up in the NBA really. Yeah. Um, you know, uh, you know, I know there's a lot of kids out here. I know Keontae George, but I, I you know, I haven't really seen him too much. Um, and, and who are some of your young uh, NBA guys? Obviously, I know you have Julius. Who are some of your your other guys? Yeah, I mean, we've you know we've had Julius, uh, and then you know the OG from Dallas, CJ Miles. Yeah, uh, who's probably one of my favorite people. Um, <laughs> just one of the b best guys I've ever been around. Yeah. Um, the kid from France, uh, Frank Nilaclita, who's mm -hmm. 20. Yeah. Uh, Sekou Dubaye, who plays for the Pistons. Mm -hmm. um, and then, you know, we've had George Hill, who's with the Bucks right now. Yeah. And, um, yeah, but, I mean, you know, Julius Julius is probably, you know, you know, I spend the most time with him, you know, both on and off the court. He's probably, you know, we're, we're extremely close. And, yeah. Um, you know, a very special relationship with him. So obviously, you know, he's he's my brother and he's the guy, you know, that I, I, I root for, you know, wherever he goes. Um, you know, and that, that won't start until he re stops until he retires. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. And he got a so. long career ahead of him as well. So No but, question. But yeah, man, thanks so much for being on the show. I really appreciate you, man, for, for taking the Absolutely. time. Absolutely. Yeah, so. Absolutely, I appreciate you, bro. Yeah, you want to shout out anything else before you get out of here? No, man, I think, you know, the last thing is just, you know, as as just people, let's stop being quiet about the issue at hand. Let's let's talk about it. Let's create conversations. Let's understand, um, you know, everybody, we're all people. Let's push for equality. Let's push for unity. Um, and the biggest thing, man, is, 
is you better jump on the train because, you know, we're all pushing for it. Absolutely. And and if you're left out, now you're going to be in the minority. Um, but let's stop looking at people in race. Let's stop looking, you know, let's start just looking at people as people. And, um, you know, and that that's a big thing in my heart, especially, you know, with a lot of, you know, people that I care about and love. Um, you know, so I think that's the biggest thing for me and my platform right now is pushing, pushing, um, pushing the matters at hand that this world, you know, especially the U S deals with. And, and, um, you know, that's, that's really the only thing I want to shout out is make sure we're using our platform to, to push what's good in the world. Um, you know, and push equality, push unity and push love, push peace, man. And, and, and when I'm going to get you out of there on that note, man, thank you, my brother. Yeah, my I'm guy. So working with you and talking with you more offline as well. All right, my guy, man. All, All love. Right. Peace. Yes, sir.